Hey guys, how you doing? Not to start this on a bummer, but uh, I started 2022 off uh, fairly well with the exception of somehow my bank card got stolen. So that's currently in limbo right now as I'm getting a new one. Why that happened, my Epidemic Sound um, subscription had lapsed. So I need to wait for my card so I can get a new one. So I'm holding off on the video of this so I can have audio, like actual music and stuff that I want for the review of that. And I've also been sick, no COVID, just a cold, and the last couple of days. So my, my throat like cracks and stuff, that's that's why. Anyways, CES happened this year. We already talked about what happened with Stern and stuff. iArcade has announced their 2.0 cabinet for 2022. And it honestly looks mostly the same. It's basically same riser, same bar top for the most part, same control deck. I believe the 19 inch screen is the same screen at the same angle. It's everything where the speakers sit and above is what they changed. So they've added more like a arch on the thing now. And the speakers kind of set in more like at an angle like a lot of the older arcade machines do. So now they have a lighted marquee. So the first one up is going to be the Dead Cells cab, which is, you can see an image of right here. So on with some of the visible changes and some of the rumored changes. So visible, obviously that curve, that uh, lighted marquee, which is very cool. Hopefully they get something down the road, like a much more bigger property. They can kind of like make a cabinet out of this for, but you know, Dead Souls, it doesn't look like a bad cabinet. I just would want something a little bit more classic for me personally. Um, it looks like they have bat tops instead of ball tops now. I don't have a problem with ball tops, but bat tops work a little bit better for fighters. So if this year's the year of the fighters for iArcade, by all means, put bat tops on there. It's great. Anybody can switch them out too, which is also awesome. Apparently the audio, it's still 100 watt speakers, but now they're gonna use, they got a contract with JBL to use JBL audio on the cabinets now. So I'm kind of curious how that's gonna sound. Is it gonna be overall crisper? I do think the current ones, they sound really good. And especially when you're playing the older arcade games, it's, I don't think it's gonna be a make or break difference, but when you're playing more of the modern sort of like, you know, games like uh, Dragon's Trap and stuff like that, you can definitely tell it sounds a little bit it muffled. So apparently the, some YouTubers are saying this is confirmed. I haven't been able to find it confirmed anywhere. So if anybody has this information, please pass it to me. I'm curious about it myself. But rumored, as far as I know, the iArcades, like the way it is right now, is the actual brains for it is in the control deck itself. So it seems like that might be now moved behind the monitor as opposed to being in the control deck. And apparently there's a patent out there to swap out like different control decks and stuff. So I have two questions about this. If this is true, is that is that what's gonna happen? And everybody that's gonna wanna like say, have games that work with like trackball and they want like a trackball deck. Does that mean that there's gonna have to be, everybody's gonna have to upgrade to 2.0 or will there be an upgrade path for people on 1.0 cabinets? Cause the way it looks for the most part, it looks like if anything, we could just maybe get like the new upgraded internals and put those inside the cabinet and then, you know, put the control deck on because it almost looks mostly the same. We know we're getting online play later this year. Now, my other question is, is this the interface like upgraded at all? Is it maybe looking a little bit nicer, a little bit sleeker? Uh, are you guys going to be putting the store actually on the cabinets itself as opposed to having you use like a phone app, which I don't have because I have an iPhone. So I have to actually go to the website to buy games. Is that going to be fixed as well? Is there going to be an iPhone app? Also, I'd like to know what you guys are doing for like expanding your licenses with like companies that you already have or expanding the games for the license holders that you already have. So like IRM, for instance, are you guys going to get like Ninja Spirit on the system? Are you going to open that library up a little bit more? Sega, are we going to maybe get Shinobi or Golden Axe or something like that? That's something I think that we need answers on sometime soon. The other thing I'm wondering and would like to ask is, does these new internal hardware have like does it have a USB port on it? Does it have an external USB port on it? One of the things I've been thinking about with the IRK and I'm wondering why they're not kind of leveraging since they have you know, pretty good technology already is there's this maker of light gun technology called Sidon. And so far, I believe Polymega has signed up with them and they have a light gun attachment coming. It's just like a little white border around the screen that helps it track what you're shooting at and stuff like that. Do you guys have any possibility of maybe working with Sidon to bring games, the light gun games like Lethal Enforcers over to the IR Arcade? To me, it would seem like you would need a USB attachment, but maybe possibly like some other kind of attachment or something like that. These are some things I've just been thinking about and wondering if there's any answers to these questions. Questions. Okay, other question I have is 
what kind of licenses are we going to get from other companies? Are we going to see down the road? Like Atari and Namco have been notoriously easy to work with in the past for other people. So are we going to see, start finally seeing games like Pac-Man? Are we going to start seeing games like Asteroids on the iArcade? Um, the other one I have is Konami. Konami seems to be working with a lot more people right now. It'd be cool to have some of the older Konami arcade games like Contra and stuff, but also to have the NES versions of those games. Uh, maybe through some kind of miracle work with Nickelodeon and Konami and and Ubisoft because I believe that's the three companies you have to have to get the trifecta to get Ninja Turtles on the thing. Um, is there any possibility of getting the new Ninja Turtles game Shredder's Revenge actually on the iArcade since you guys are already working with .emu? And the other question I would like to get answered this year is... You know, what about some of those other companies like Capcom and stuff? Have they kind of opened up at all? Or are they willing to work with you guys? Or are they still kind of like locked to iArcade right now? Or I should say Arcade 1-Up. Anyways, these are the questions I have. I think the cabinet looks great. Um, one of my concerns is, is kind of the big, like, major sale that happened over the holidays. Um, now that we see the new cabinet for 2022, I kind of get why that sale happened with such steep discounts but the thing i'm always kind of worried about with sales like is normally when you do like a deep cut sale like this um usually that's that like even though it's a sale and it's only supposed to be temporary customers sometimes like have that set in stone in their mind and they don't pull the trigger until the next sale happens so as cool as this cabinet is i think i probably would have zigged where you guys zagged a little bit more um let me know viewers if you feel like i'm off base here but i probably wouldn't have done that thus far i probably would have done something more like a single player cab where it's just like one single control deck for one player a little bit smaller a little bit cheaper and make that just a bar top only i don't know anyways let me know what you guys think see you guys in the next video